she's had a uh, great interest in the natural sciences and there's rumor of a serpent in Essex and kind of as an excuse to uh, kind of uh, free herself from this gilded cage that she's been living in in London, she goes in pursuit of it and the serpent serves as a metaphor for her anxieties and fears and, and everybody else in the stories as well. I think it's kind of quietly radical, the novel, and hopefully our uh, interpretation of it. Um, it's kind of like, um, it's sort of like a, like, you know, a story of the exile of Eden, but without the sense of shame. Um, and, and it's quite feminist for that reason. It talks about love and sex and death as all kind of one integrated experience. Um, and uh, yeah, I just was really attracted to the themes of the story. It was a fantastic team. Um, we all happen to be female and share very similar values and and I, we tried our darndest to um, articulate them together uh, creatively. I'm Anna Simon and I wrote the screenplay for the series The Essex Serpent. The Essex Serpent is a very contemporary story in the sense that it doesn't hold back in the way that a lot of period dramas do on the emotional sort of intimacy of the characters and really has a very modern take I think in the way that we look at the women in particular in the series there's nothing restrained about it um, we really get to the kind of guts of what these people are about it's been a real pleasure working with Clio Bernard um, as sort of women behind the camera I think we had a really special responsibility to kind of make sure that we made the female gaze at the heart of the show. Clio was incredibly um, brave in the choices that she made and made it incredibly female centric which was really exciting to be part of. Audiences can expect a mystery at the heart of the show. Um, the show opens with the idea that this serpent has come to haunt the people of a village in Essex. So it's very atmospheric, you're trying to work out does this serpent exist or not. At the same time there's an incredible love story running through it between the central characters, but also a story of friendship and a story of women finding their place in the world. I'm Clemence Poesy and I play Stella Renzo. It's the arrival of Cora Seaborn in a little seaside town um, where a mysterious serpent has been um, seen, apparently, by villagers. Um, and it's a clash between lots of things, religion and science. Everything she's wearing she could have made and there's a sort of sense Stella has a sort of very happy um, a sense of domesticity and of making things and of making life around her beautiful uh, and that's sort of reflected in the costumes I think. My name's Clio Barnard and I'm the director of the Essex Serpent. It's set in 1893 and I suppose what is different about it is that it's is the Essex landscape and in a way the way Sarah Perry understands Essex in a way you may never have seen Essex before. It explores fear and uncertainty and how we need to learn to live with it really and how if we project our fears out into the world and we act on them they become manifest so um, yeah I think it's quite relevant. Characters that Sarah created and that Anna Simon um, brought to the pay, onto the, the screen through her adaptation of it um, 
really we had a lot to get our teeth into and a lot to play with and um, it was it was challenging but incredibly rewarding in terms of um, working with them because they're two such brilliant brilliant and experienced actors it was a real um, uh, yeah I feel really lucky brilliant. Hi, I'm Frank Delane and I play Luke Garrett. The story of the Essex Serpent revolves around uh, Cora Seaborn, who is a uh, woman whose husband has just died um, and she is um, beginning her new life um, without him. He was quite an abusive man, so she um, has a very curious temperament and um, moves to Essex to hunt this mythical beast um, that is being reported in the newspapers as the Essex Serpent. Clio was fantastic, an amazing director to work with. Her, um, her great talent was she made the set feel so um, open to exploration and um, just uh, it was a real joy to go into work every day. My name is Jerry Kearns and I played Henry Banks in the Essex Serpent. It's a love story of, of two worlds colliding um, in, in kind of the Dickensian time and the, um, it, it's about community and love and friendship and trust and, and, and characters in that community. How flat it was and the way the light travelled was, was absolutely gorgeous. It would have been brilliant. It would have been a dream for the DOP and some of the shots they, they could do with that. And yeah, it, it was absolutely gorgeous and it was great, you know, all the nature and the outdoors and shooting on location. It's always fab shooting on location. It's great. Through the production team, the cast, everyone, you know, the companies who wanted to tell the story and make it work, to, to pull that all together, I think is brilliant. I think it's beautiful, would be the answer, simple as that. My name is Ian Canning and I'm an executive producer on the Essex Serpent. I think it's so fresh and I think the performances are so sort of strong and raw. Um, and I think you get that in, in certain miniseries, but I think, I don't know, there's a, a sort of eeriness, a sort of special eeriness, and um, Clio's done such an extraordinary job as a filmmaker with Anna's scripts. I, yeah, there's a sort of unique rawness to it, I think. Clio's character in particular shows us uh, uh, a woman who is sort of relieved of the shackles of her sort of husband's control at the start of the, the show and then is able to live as much of a free life as she was able to within the context of the time. So I think it is just forthright and, you know, bold, I think. My name is Jamal Westman and I play George Spencer. At the core of it, it's about love sometimes in some cases unrequited love or uh, love in a hard time um, I think people have felt that over the past few years that, that love is sometimes hard to find people feel like they have to live for themselves but this is kind of like lo a radical love in the face of hardship um, and it's also about friendship actually at the core of everything it was a beautiful story really really beautifully told and it just speaks about all those little intricacies of of relationships, interpersonal relationships that we all feel and is universally felt, um, uh, but sometimes don't get to express. So it really spoke to that, and uh, it's never left me. So I'm really excited to see it. It was a joy. It was actually like an, a, a, it was really uplifting, um, and just allows a, a type of freedom that you don't often get sometimes on sets, particularly in like a male-dominated space. Not to say that that doesn't allow for it, but there was just something really refreshing about that. To be fair, in my current experience, it's kind of been the norm in filming. I've had the, the joy of really working with like an all-female crew and, and, and creative team. Um, and so it's just, there's something really touching and, and beautiful about that. And so I was just really grateful to be in that space. And
I'm Jamie Lawrenson. I'm one of the executive producers on the show. Uh, my name is Sakan Fusetto and I'm one of the executive producers on the show. The setting of the show is somewhere I don't think we've really sort of seen uh, before. Uh, we, you know, we, we filmed it in the heart of Essex and in the most sort of rural, sort of atavistic environment probably you could imagine. So. It explores, as I said, fear of the unknown. It also explores, it's a love story at its heart and it explores uh, love in all its forms. I think that's, that's what, um, you know, is the biggest takeaway, I think, from the show. Yeah, and also the, the, the kind of clashing of traditional sort of thinking, religious thinking versus sort of modern, scientific, rational sort of yeah. concepts, really. Our leads are amazing, but the whole ensemble are, are brilliant, and uh, yeah, it's down to them that uh, such an extraordinary world is created. Yeah. yeah, and they were absolute troopers. We shot this in the height of COVID. It was incredibly challenging. You know, making television is always really hard anyway, but it was it was doubly hard actually in real terms. And and they were just fantastic all the way through. My name's Michael Gibson and I play Matthew Evansford in The Essex Serpent. What I will say is that it's about um, a community down in Essex that gets uh, a taste of, of London life and it's about fear and hearsay and um, love and mystery and, um, and a little bit of magic as well, let's say. My character is very is, is very fearful of, of everything and very very god fearing. Um, so I suppose he's kind of like a kind of interfering local councillor who who likes telling everybody what to do and um, and scaring everybody with with with, with gossip and, and hearsay and fear. The mud. <laughs> there was a lot of mud involved filming down in Essex. Um, Unfortunately for, for my character, um, I didn't get to shoot in any of the nice London studios, so we, we did it all down in Essex, but of course it was great fun and we were, we were filming in lots of, um, in lots of um, on the actual estuaries themselves, you know, in the mud and the elements were around. It's very windy and cold time of year, so it was, it was quite exciting and challenging for the crew and everybody to, to, to shoot scenes, you know. Clio is, you know, the captain of this ship that was just, she was, she's just such a lovely person and so, and so thorough in the way that she works with her actors. You know, there was a little bit of rehearsal before we, before we got on set and, and, it, and everything would, it just felt like we were just kind of, we were just having a really nice time down in Essex. And of course, you could see that there was a real collaboration going on between all of the, all of the departments. And I think that was because of all, the, all of these brilliant ladies who were, who were kind of collaborating with each other from the top. And it was, and it was obviously, you know, coming down into the different departments. And certainly on set, we were all having such a lovely time. I'm Patrick Walters. I'm an executive producer of The Essex Serpent. The source material that it's based on, the novel by Sarah Perry, is just uh, distinctive, uh, interesting. It paints a picture of Victorian society that you know feels unusual and exciting, and that the characters are very passionate and headstrong and take you on a journey. The story explores loads of different themes, but for me, I love how it treats platonic love and romantic love and says that they can both coexist side by side. I'm Sarah Perry and I wrote the novel The Essex Serpent. It's really extraordinary and kind of a huge privilege to be taken back into a story that meant so much to me at the time. I wrote it quite a long time ago so I feel like I've gone in a time machine and somehow everyone's climbed inside my imagination so it's been really wonderful. My thesis writing the novel was that um, the Victorians were a modern people. Um, I didn't want to write a novel where women were shown to be fainting away in the corner, having just delivered their ninth child, not allowed to leave the house. 
or where politics didn't really exist and there was street urchins and pea supers. It was a modern age. There was anaesthesia, there was heart surgery, there was socialism, there was proto-feminism. Women were working in medicine, engineering, maths, sciences. Um, so I decided to show the Victorian age as a modern age and Victorian women as being modern women, which they were. I think the key theme is that of uh, friendship and varieties of friendship and different kinds of love and I know that readers of the novel are sometimes quite shocked by all the different types of intimacy and friendship that are displayed um, and I really enjoy that um, and I'm hoping that the audience will be kind of challenged and surprised by some of the relationships and I really hope that it will help put an end to the idea that Victorian women never left the house because that's a falsehood that has needed correcting for a really long time and I'm only one of many writers who have tried to uh, revert that impression and I know this series will do that as well. We are here uh, for the special screening of The Essex Serpent for Apple TV+. It's based on a novel by Sarah Perry um, which came out uh, about six years ago. It's set in 1893 in London and Essex. There has been, and there really was, a, an earthquake which um, dislodged all sorts of fossils in the Essex landscape, um, which has created a curiosity about archaeology. And we have to remember this is a time when Darwin has just published The Origin of the Species. So um, science and reason are starting to become a um, very progressive way of understanding the world. A teenage girl has gone missing something's bumping into the fishing boats. Has the Essex serpent, the ancient winged dragon that lives beneath the Blackwater estuary, come back and been awakened by the earthquake? And this rumor starts to spread like wildfire around the community, um, into which our heroine, Cora Seaborn, played by Claire Danes, um, arrives because she's curious about the archeology span side of it, and she finds a very God-fearing and faithful community who um, find meaning in their faith, destabilized by their superstition. Um, and there begins our story. I find uh, when I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to play a character that's based on a book, um, the novelist um, Sarah Perry, uh, John Le Carre in The Night Manager, for example, um, there's they give the actors so much um, interiority because authors are always getting inside the hearts and minds of their characters. Um, what they're thinking, what they're feeling, it's beneath the surface of what they're doing and saying. So reading the book was really helpful. I had never been to that part of Essex um, and I, I found it in, in, incredibly evocative um, and inspiring. Because on the on the far east coast, the easternmost east coast of England, I think if you you know if you swam from the North Sea there, you'd get to Denmark, um, and it's very tidal and wet and windy and very atmospheric. It's where Turner used to go and paint, and he painted these extraordinary sunsets and extraordinary skies, and and um, you know it's so much about the story, so much about that landscape and how treacherous it can be if you get caught by the tide um, and the Blackwater estuary is quite serpentine it's it, from viewed from the air it looks like a snake um, and I was surprised by it it's obviously a very ancient part of England uh, but my Clio Barnard for a long time uh, we met we met about 10 years ago at the London Film Festival and we both remember that meeting actually and uh, it was really nice to work with her because I've always admired her from a distance. Her films, The Selfish Giant, Dark River, The Arbor. Um, I thought Anna Simon's screenplays were in incredibly deep. They, they seemed to have a, the texture of the novel, but they also had something very tangible and very raw. Um, the landscape is, is, very, um, is very wild, and that mirrors something turbulent about the passions of the characters, which is, which is quite unfettered and wild too. Uh, so I thought Anna really captured that. Um, Sarah's novel, she's so generous and so open and we had many conversations. Um, I was trying to kind of um, 
just borrow as much of her own research as I could. Um, yeah, it was an amazing team. And uh, Andrea Cornwell, our producer, um, amazing uh, women in the, in leading our cast, Claire Danes, Clemence Poes.